Symmetry is useful in determining the maximum degeneracy of a wave function. We have a molecule. The molecule is associated with a particular point group. The point group has associated with it a character table. And if we look down the E column, the identity column of the uh, character table, we can find out for that particular molecule corresponding to that point group what the maximum degeneracy of a wave function is for that molecule. So what do we mean here by the E column? Let's go to our uh, list of character tables. I'll just take something at random here. Uh, this is for the CI group, which contains the identity and inversion operators. Uh, we have going down here, the maximum number here is 1. So uh, the, there is no degeneracy possible for a molecule that exhibits the CI. Uh, symmetry. Let's go down here to say uh, C3V. C3V, if we go down the E column here, this identity, we have 1, 1, and 2. This means that a molecule that has C3V symmetry, for example ammonia, can have a doubly degenerate wave function. Recall that degenerate wave functions are wave functions, uh, different wave functions characterized by different quantum numbers that have the same energy. So ammonia can have uh, two-way functions maximum that have the same energy. And if we go down here, we see some twos here. And note the confusing use of notation. E, when you label a column, represents the identity operation or identity symmetry element. But E, when you're labeling a row, represents a uh, two, a doubly degenerate uh, wave function, for example. So E here, used in the same table, has two different meanings. All right, and uh, what else can we have? Well, if we go down here to these very, uh, very symmetric groups, uh, for instance, here um, for these tetrahedral, octahedral point groups, if we go down the E column here, we have maximum of three. So a molecule that has T symmetry can have a maximum of three uh, wave functions that have the same energy, that are degenerate. And the three in that column is denoted by T for triplet. I guess, something like that. So if we go down here, this TTH has a triplet, maximum degeneracy wave function of three and so on. So that's sometimes useful, although I've never found it useful, but uh, apparently sometimes it's useful. One of the things we teach in physical chemistry. So let's do this example. What's the lowest symmetry a molecule can have and still have triply degenerate wave functions? All right, so if we scan this table uh, here, uh, what we find is the only place we find uh, triply degenerate wave functions is in these so-called cubic groups here, where you have very high symmetry. You have a cube or an octahedron or a icosahedron or something like that. So let's see. OK, there's a triplet. How many total symmetry operations do we have for this T point group? Well, there's 1 plus 4 is 5, 9, 12. So here you have 12 symmetry operations uh, that has a maximum of a triply degenerate wave function. And let's go down here to the TD. Uh, oh, that's much higher. So even though that's triply, that's, that's higher than the one we saw before. We go down here, TH. Oh, lots of them. And the O. Oh, look at all those. That's still greater. And holy mackerel, look at this one, the OH. Lots of different symmetry. You add all those up, you get lots of them. And uh, finally, um, for the icosahedrons, whoa, 2015, a whole bunch of things. Um, they're triply, and look, four. <laughs> you can have something that has icosahedral symmetry. Uh, you can have a maximum degeneracy of four. Four wave functions can have the same energy here, five. That's given the G and H symbols. I guess they ran out of T, so they're not going G and H and uh, so on. But it looks like that very first one we saw was the this one here, the T point group, has the minimum number of operations associated with it, total operations, and uh, but still has a triplet uh, degeneracy, maximum degeneracy, so we would say the T group here. Alright, so that's it, symmetry and degeneracy.